Morning everyone, welcome back. It is a Thursday morning, I think. I've kind of lost track of days, I'll be honest. <laughs> and it's pretty windy, <laughs> nothing changes. Um, got a bit of a run session this morning, just to go through the gears. Legs and my body's sort of starting to come around a little bit post-travel, which is really good. So this morning I've got, um, yeah, just a 50 minute easy jog, and then main set is gonna be four by one minute, at 3.15, minute easy jog between, a uh, couple of minutes easy, and then we'll go into uh, two by a K, sitting at like half Ironman pace, so, so 3.30s, um, maybe 3.25s, we'll see. A um, couple of minutes easy jog between those, and then we'll finish off. So it's nothing crazy today, it's just, like I keep saying, like revving the engine, making sure you're going through the gears but you're not doing anything to make any fatigue sort of last um, ahead of race day so let's get it done session done um felt really good actually uh confidence inducing which is what these sort of sessions leading up to the race should be like um yeah the 315s there's a bit rolling on the front there actually so yeah it's gonna be interesting on race day um hopefully less people walking around though and uh the k reps maybe a bit too quick but i was focusing more on uh good posture good form and making the pace feel easy um and actually yeah it did it felt really good really cruisy and so if that pace felt good today then the idea is that on on race day race pace feels really good but obviously there's a big if and a question mark but <laughs> we're gonna do everything we can to get to race day feeling as good as possible so it's given me a bit of confidence that session starting to yeah feel really good post travel um, we'll get a second breakfast in and then head out on the bike you can guess the appearance on this ride today and his dad. And his dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm making. Yeah. He's waiting in the car park though. <laughs> a little bit late. Well. It's not like you to be late. Yeah, it's not weird. I'll wait another five minutes. <laughs> 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 hey, it's bloody useless, it's sustainable. How you doing? Hi, Aiden. Hi, Aiden. Hi, James. Hi. Nice to meet you. Star of the show today. Oh, I don't think so. You really don't want to make me the star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom Ward. <laughs> Tom Ward? He knows everyone on the island, doesn't he? Oh, have you been calling him? Yeah. Why? I was like, oh, do you know anyone who's going to fix him brakes? But then he also said... That's the one I got on, on I Googled last night. But then he also said he's got um, spare rotors, because I think the back one's bent. I'll test it first. Is it still rubbing then? Uh, I don't know, I only rolled over here. Yeah. I'll be able to tell in a bit. We're beating <laughs> James at the roundabout, by the way, the service road meets the main road. James Scott Farrington. Scott Farrington, yeah. There's one a bit out back where you go down to the coast, isn't there? Yeah, out to... Um, You've done that road before? Yeah, up to, what's it called, um, El Golfo. What's it like? It's a road. Yeah, it's a bit windy, it's a bit volcanic. <laughs> Do that? It's all a bit windy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. How you doing, mate? Good. Hey, are you alright? Yeah, not bad. Guess the first. Got the uh, the dark lens on. Can't see your eyes. Can't see your eyes. <laughs>
Where'd you go? Good ride. Good ride. Um, <laughs> yummy. Um, yeah, good ride. It was nice to wear the new helmet. Just see how it fitted with my position. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with it actually. Who did you ride with? Yeah. Um, rode with Andy, Oswald Turner, and James Scott Farrington. Um, just did 90 minutes, pretty chilled. And actually the wind direction today was pretty good. And then Andy went off and did a few more efforts because he's a loser. Um, yeah, helmet felt good, happy with that. Legs are feeling decent. And we've now had some food. Got oh, a bit of indigestion, bloody hell. Yeah, it's like um, dry sandwich. Yeah, trying to get it down. Um, let's go. We're gonna go to swim now. But before that, probably register. And check out the expo if we have time. Uh, so I'm gonna have to put my bloody foot down in the car. Let's go. Good swim. Good swim. Um, yeah, it was a bit choppy, but it was good. Did a few little surges, but um, nothing too crazy. Starting to sort of come around, but yeah, it's always difficult to know where you're at when you swim with someone like Andy and Josh, uh, because they're very good swimmers. So uh, fingers crossed, I can try and keep up with them on the weekend. And then we're gonna head Turn to the right shop. Onto Calais um, head to the shops now, get some grub, head home, and we are done for the day. Actually, oh, we do need to talk about something, don't we? Shut up! <laughs> yeah, what are we talking about tonight? <laughs> yeah, uh, the topic of this video, actually, we're going to talk about uh, my hydration, nutrition strategy, and um, my sort of bike setup, because I've changed my... Um, Change my setup slightly for this race for various reasons and that's something we're going to dive into a little bit later on Hopefully once we've had some food so I can perk up a little bit <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to run through my race day setup You've obviously seen I've got these very nice new Swiss side wheels, which I'm really looking forward to Training out here riding on them. It just feels fantastic coupled up with the 28 mil tires but I'm gonna talk more about how I'm gonna carry my nutrition, my hydration, because that's super important with, obviously it's gonna be a really tough race, it's gonna be hilly, it's gonna be hot, so there are loads of different factors that you need to consider when you wanna think about taking fuel and hydration on the bike with you. In the past, I've had bottle here, bottle here, and also a bottle there on the down tube. You will notice I don't have that bottle on the down tube now. The reason for this is, that was an aero bottle, which is great, but it was a Cervelo P5 bottle. It didn't really fit the frame. For those of you that have seen previous videos, uh, the P5 bottle just overhang quite a bit, like by a sort of, a definitely by five to 10 mil each side of the frame. And if I'm trying to actively leave no stone unturned with this setup, it makes me feel like, obviously it's not causing too much drag, but there is some degree of drag being caused there and I, I don't want that playing on my mind mentally when I'm riding, I'm like, oh, this aero bottle's not actually really fitting the frame at all. So I'm getting rid of that completely. I'm also gonna take out these little bolts here just to save a little bit of weight on race day. <laughs> That's not gonna make much of a difference, but mentally for me as well, it's gonna help out. So instead, what I'm gonna do is have a litre bottle behind the saddle, which is what I always have. Keeps it out of the way, keeps it nice and narrow. Instead of having a 500 mil on the down tube and a 500 mil between the bars, 
I have moved my Garmin further up towards my hands, which actually puts it in a better plane of sight, but I've had to angle it, as you can see slightly. It looks really weird. I've angled it so that it dips below here, so it doesn't affect my hand position, um, and it doesn't dig into my hands. So that fits pretty nicely. And then I'm gonna have another litre bottle, and that will slop nicely in there. So I'm still carrying the same two litres that I was going to, but it's just instead of in three bottles, I've got it in two, two bottles. <laughs> um, and then in the bottles, what I'm gonna have is always behind me, I have my electrolytes. So 1500 sachets, two 1500 sachets from Precision Fuel and Hydration in there. In this bottle, I'm gonna have all of my fuel. Now you might think that sounds a little bit risky because I may drop this bottle or something may happen. Luckily between the bars like this, bottle cage and this bottle sits in really nicely so when I'm riding I've got quite a lot of confidence in it. However, I do have my insurance policy which is this top tube pouch and in here I will store a couple of gels, maybe three gels just to make sure I've got that. Just in case something does happen, I drop this, I know I've still got some fuel there. Now, that's the setup I'm going to start with. However, it is looking to be pretty hot, it's going to be tough racing, it's going to be pretty hilly. I want to make sure that I preload as much as I can on the bike ahead of the run as well, which is going to be a savage run. Two litres of fluid, essentially it's actually less than two litres of fluid because you've got to think of the amount of gel that I put in here as well, so actually it's slightly less than two litres. That's not going to be enough fluid for me. So in the past, I've wanted to be as self-sufficient as possible. However, I, yes, I could add another bottle to the down tube, but then I'm increasing the amount of weight that I need to carry around. And there is quite a bit of climbing here, and I don't want to be at a disadvantage. I'm slightly heavier than some other athletes on the course, and I just don't want to be lugging around all this weight. So I am going to make use of the aid stations, and I've decided I'm going to hit an aid station at about 46k, where I should be completely out of this bottle. I can then take this bottle out, annoyingly, chuck it on the ground. <laughs> I'll have to buy another one. Um, or ask the guys at Precision Fuel Hydration to, to give me one. Um, and then I will grab a isotonic drink or a, a electrolyte drink, which is 226ers or something, I believe, the company. Um, and that bottle will go in here. I think it's a 750 mil bottle, and I believe it's got 950 milligrams of sodium. So that will help elevate uh, my fluid intake but also my sodium intake as well and that if I can get through that on the bike that would be fantastic. Um, I'm planning on having like I said all my gels in here probably about seven gels so it's going to be pretty thick. I'm going to make sure I try and mix it up as best as I possibly can to get through that so I'll probably have two of the um, precision fuel and hydration jumbo gels and then just another one to top it up. That should leave me with about 100 grams, maybe slightly over 100 grams of carbs an hour, which is perfect. And then I will take, not one of these, but this is just an example of what the gels look like, um, a jumbo gel on the run with me, 90 grams of carbs, and I'll be trying to get in as much water, as much coke, as much anything as possible, to be honest, to survive. Um, and that is gonna be my setup. Just keeping it really simple, keeping it really quick, making sure I'm optimizing it as much as possible, and then use the stuff out on course where necessary to make sure I'm not lugging around sort of extra weight. And this is it, this is the race day setup. My last thing I need to do is put on a ceramic speed chain and I'm gonna go on a little spin tomorrow, um, do a few pickups and just bed that chain in. Um, so that's the last thing I need to do for this setup and do all the other bits and bobs and admin around for race day. But essentially this is the last video before race day because tomorrow we're gonna do like a, a two day video for race day. So we're gonna do the lead up to race day, all the racking, stuff like that. And that will lead in really nicely to the race day. So the next video you see will be race day video. Whether that comes out on Sunday or Monday, I'm not 100% sure because it depends on Wi-Fi and the quality of the upload or how quick we can get the, the video out but that'll be the next video so i really hope you guys have enjoyed this short race week series just showing you guys what's been going on how we've been addressing things how things are slightly different for this race and uh yeah i'm looking forward to race day hope you guys are looking forward to fingers crossed tracking me on the tracker and um i'll see you on the other side what's your race number race number is 39
I think. There you go. Truck yeah, it. It's 39. Get it on the truck it. <laughs> <laughs>